Uh, I'll begin by uh, introducing our first keynote speech. I'd like to welcome Kieran Murphy, VP and President and CEO of GE Healthcare Life Sciences. Kieran joined GE in 2008 as a result of the acquisition of Watman PLC, where he served as CEO. He was appointed, appointed Chief Executive Officer of the Life Sciences Business of GE in 2011. He's held a number of CEO positions throughout the years and has been involved in the life sciences industry since joining Janssen Pharmaceuticals in 1989. We're looking forward to hearing from you, Karen. So thank you uh, very much, Jeff, for a warm introduction. Um, it's a great pleasure uh, for me to, uh, uh, to be here presenting today. Uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm relieved uh, because about six years ago, uh, GE made the decision to set up a cell, tel cell technologies group. Uh, you know, we're, I run a, a, a business with 1.9 billion revenues in, in, uh, in 2012. And uh, obviously, a, a very small part of that today is cell, uh, related to cell technologies. It's primarily uh, protein therapeutics related. But we, uh, we decided about six years ago to set up a cell technologies team. And of course, uh, we wouldn't have had as many people in a room like this today, uh, back then, as we, as we do today. So there's a momentum building in this industry, and, uh, and we're very encouraged by that. Uh, and it, it is great to see so many people in the room. And what I want to go on to talk to today, and uh, relates to Jeff's point on timing to invest, uh, we think that this is a very interesting time uh, for the industry, and uh, I just want to talk a little bit about our commitment uh, to the cell, the cell therapy and regenerative medicine space. If I start by uh, just uh, looking at uh, uh, what we mean uh, by um, re regenerative medicine, of course it's uh, a reconstruction of functionally impaired, diseased, or, or uh, injured tissue by activation of endogenous or, or in exogenous uh, using exogenous cells, or, or a combination of both, or a combination of cells and perhaps small molecules. And if you look at uh, what's happened with, I'm going to draw on the comparison to monoclonal antibodies a few times during this presentation. Uh, if you look at, at the evolution of monoclonal antibodies and, and related technologies, uh, on occasion, it is good to have a combination approach. And I think the, the future could be really interesting in terms of the use of small molecules with some of these regen, regenerative medicine uh, areas. And of course, you, what you'll hear today from various presentations is this covers many, many areas, many different approaches, looking at uh, internal tissues and organs, and, and of course, uh, the areas like skin. Uh, as I said, we, we see many parallels with the monoclonal antibody industry. And in fact, if you look at the evolution and go back uh, 10 years ago to 2003, uh, the monoclonal antibody business, uh, in total, the therapy was probably around five or six billion in, in total size. And today it's around 60 billion. And so over that 10 year period, you know, there's been a wave of merger and acquisition activity a uh, huge drive for industrialization. And of course, if you look, if you look now like at the, what the blockbusters are, top 10 uh, selling drugs in the pharma world, six of them are monoclonal antibodies. And you go back to 2003, and in fact, most of these products were struggling to get through clinical trials and, and get established on the market. And so, as we see it, we are probably four to five years from that sort of inflection point uh, that happened to monoclonal antibodies. And if you look at what happened around 2003 and, and the wave of activity that occurred then, um, suddenly we, we think that now is a good time to invest because if you look at, um, at what's likely to happen in terms of m and activity and interest from pharma, uh, this is at a very interesting stage. I, I th and this brings me to the, to, to the point of who's, who's getting interested. And Jeff already referred to this in, in his uh, opening remarks. You know, when we ha have discussions now with um, some of the pharmaceutical companies mentioned on, on the slide here, uh, it's quite clear they, they are 
very interested in the space. They want uh, people like GE to help them with getting to scale. Uh, they want confidence that, that uh, this is a, these are processes that can be industrialized. And of course, that's helped by companies like GE, companies like Lanza, who are in, in fact, involved in the, in the CMO space. But of course, it also needs uh, good uh, companies to be established in the space. And of course, we are seeing that evolution as well. And, and uh, no doubt, you will hear many good presentations today from, from companies in the room here who have exciting uh, technologies that are making their way through clinical trials or indeed, in the case of companies like Dendrion, are, are on the market. And so we, we see this uh, increasing attention from Big Pharma as being a very interesting uh, uh, stage indeed. And of course, Jeff from Shire will be, will be speaking in a few minutes, and he'll, he'll tell you more about their, their view of the, of, the, of the game. I think what's, what's so exciting is that if you look at the disease areas that, that will affect us all, uh, some of us uh, probably sooner rather than later, the, uh, these therapies are critically important, and they're huge. And so uh, I, if you look at, at areas that are being tackled by companies like uh, Mesoblast or Cytori in the case of myocardial infarction, um, I, I think there are really interesting targets here, difficult targets for any other mode of action. Uh, and that's what makes this so interesting. It, it's, it's, uh, it will change people's lives. It's huge uh, uh, and more possible than it is with, uh, say, a small molecule approaches, where a lot of times you have a small molecule uh, desperately looking for a home in an indication. And that, that do, you don't get that dynamic in this space. So we think it's going to be much more targeted. And the question is, how do you evolve uh, to have something that's industrialized in that space. I suppose one of the advantages uh, that, that I have um, and we have as GE is that we do get to see a lot of what's happening around the world. And the, the other thing I, that's exciting about this game uh, uh, is that it's going on everywhere. And if you look at the interest by the Japanese in IPS cells uh, and the Chinese generally, and the Chinese, it's quite interesting when you go around China and, and go into hospitals, uh, there is a lot going on in the space of cell therapy. And of course, the SFDA uh, are very interested in bringing discipline and good regulation to bear on this space. Uh, and that's also, I think, an essential move uh, that, that the regulations keep pace with what you guys are trying to do in terms of the development of therapy. Jeff is com completely right. I completely agree with the point that there isn't a government that I know uh, that's not looking at this space very closely. And the, the, what I find encouraging, especially if you're in, if, if you're in our business of providing tools, uh, governments are keen, despite all the cutbacks in, in research in various different areas, the sales area appears to um, at, still attract a lot of funding. And if, if you look at the UK, which is uh, where I live now, um, they've just established what's called the Cell Therapy Catapult. It's getting um, uh, TSB funding, government funding. And then you have a wave of pharma companies on the back of some of that uh, wishing to establish um, footprint in the UK. And, and, uh, and that's really interesting. And I think the Catapult in London is, is a sort of real signal that uh, uh, countries like the UK see regen made and, and cell therapy as being incredibly important for the future. So um, when I look at the, the cells business, uh, we, we kind of split this into two. We'll mainly talk here about cells as therapy on the top, and we'll, we'll come back to that topic uh, in a few minutes. Of course, we also see cells as potentially very interesting tools in the area of drug discovery, and in, in particular, toxicity screening. Because, of course, uh, the, the, the old-fashioned model of looking at um, toxicity of drugs in, in, in models that were developed 50 years ago, um, they, they are outdated now. And, of course, some of the, the big drugs that came on the market or that had to be removed from the market, should I say, that suffered from cardiotoxicity uh, would have been uh, 
that would have been uncovered had they used technologies like we have today. Uh, and if you look at the, the screen, uh, those are beating cardiomyocytes. Um, the, we, we grow these cells in our laboratory in, in Cardiff in Wales. Uh, it's, it's absolutely amazing uh, to, to walk into a lab and see cells in a dish who then sp these uh, spontaneously start to beat. It, it is, uh, it's always amazing and an eye-opener. Uh, we can use these cells um, using various techniques uh, to detect uh, cardiotoxicity. And of course, the plan is if we, if, if we progress that and look at hepatotox uh, as well, uh, I think these become really very powerful tools in the, um, in the development of, of uh, better pharmaceuticals. The advantage of, from our point of view is that, of course, we have gone down the learning curve with cardiomyocytes. We've gone down the learning curve in, you know, what are the best conditions to grow cells? Uh, how do you separate out those cells? And, and really uh, uh, look uh, very specifically at what is happening in a live cell. And, of course, this was or further, we've been invested in this space for quite a while. We did do a deal with Geron um, uh, a while ago to, to acquire all of the technologies related to what you see on the, on the slide here. So then into the cell therapy space, I think we know this is very interesting. But of course, what, what it needs, I think, uh, is obviously uh, more to advance on the scientific front so that people we better understand, can better characterize what's going on. Um, certainly, this will require advance products to advance through the clinic. We need a certain critical mass of stuff going through the various stages of clinical trials and bigger clinical trials that are going on, that are going on today uh, for people to feel more comfortable uh, and, and uh, more products get on the market. I mean, that's the game. Uh, revenues in the industry will drive in, uh, more interest from from the investors in the audience than, than anything else. And I think where we come to, to play then is in the, the whole industrialization of the space and, and achieving scale. And of course, there's a lot to be done here. But I think this is all volume related. Uh, if you look at the, the requirement for cost of goods to come down, uh, that will all be dependent on volume. So especially if, if I look at the disposable technologies that are, that are becoming more common now, uh, uh, you know, this industrialization uh, is, is achievable. And, you know, uh, uh, lastly, it needs investment. And I think, uh, as we said before, um, the, the investment may not be trivial, but the, the fact is the timing is probably uh, uh, very good right now. And one of the exciting things about being invested in this space is that you, you do see dramatic outcomes. And uh, there's two examples here. Uh, that uh, box in the middle is something uh, we make and sell called wave. And, uh, you know, we, we grow cells in these wave bags. And that was used in two, two examples, not too far from here, where um, people who had uh, le leukemia had T cells extracted. We purify those cells down, uh, grow them in, in media in a, w in a wave system, concentrate those cells down, inject them back into the body, and you see dramatic clinical uh, outcome uh, improvement. And so for, for patients like this that have been treated with everything else, who, uh, you know, leukemia patients who seem to have no hope uh, to get this treatment and then see a recovery, is, um, that's truly phenomenal. And, and I, I can honestly say I, I'm always proud to be involved in a space like this when I, when I see that sort of outcome. And in G, from a GE point of view, we're lucky because if you look at the, the, this, the workflow here, we have tools all the way along that workflow from you know, the, the cell isolation, purification, better identification of the cells, as I mentioned before, the, the growth, growth media, and, and the wave systems. And of course, um, we have just bought a, a more upstream businesses, including Accelerex recently, where uh, we can take cells uh, to, to quite a significant scale now, and that's encouraging. And of course, um, my colleagues in GE Healthcare in particular are interested in then evaluating clinical outcome. And if you look at what we can do with biomarkers uh, and, and uh, imaging, we can provide very close monitoring of, uh, of the outcome of these therapies. So uh, look, um, I think to wrap up here, uh, 
I think this is a huge deal. Uh, re regenerative medicine, I think, is an, a phenomenally exciting space. It, it addresses some really serious unmet clinical needs. Uh, for all of us in the audience, uh, this could be a this, this could be a very important therapy going forward. Um, look, I think I think the fundamental is this is, this goes to the core of treating a disease rather than addressing symptoms. That's why that's why it's so important. And we all know we've all made I suppose we've all made money from from uh, small molecule therapies that didn't work on, on the patients that they were meant to, you know, that were, that were taking those treatments. And you know, so you, you see stats that say, well actually only 30% of these drugs work uh, at any one time. And I think that this regen med space allows us potentially, and this goes to the point of the cost of healthcare, this could completely change the paradigm of treatment because uh, you're treating the fundamental of the, of the disease. And I think that's a critical point uh, in, in the evolution of the space. And that's why, that's why governments are so interested. Because frankly, uh, we can't afford the waste that uh, we've seen in the past. And that, look, that's why we're so committed. We, we're, um, we're a tools provider. Uh, you know, GE is a big company. <laughs> and we have, we're very heavily invested in things like oil and gas and energy. But I can tell you when I speak to the GE board about what we're doing in cell therapy and regenerative medicine, they're very excited. And even though it's a very small business for us today, they are absolutely squarely behind what we're doing uh, because they see it as, as being that we are a player who can industri help industrialize this business. And I think that's a key point, and bring it to scale, uh, and that's what we all want. Uh, that's, what, that's what's going to make everybody in this room uh, happy in the future. So thanks very much. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing the presentations the rest of the day, and I'd be delighted to, to uh, address any questions if there are um, any in the, in the few minutes that are left. Yeah. No. So the question was about you know differentiation of of, uh, of cells being the next step. I think it's a, it's a good point. We we are we scan the landscape all the time for technologies, and so that's why we show up at meetings like this as well. Of course, to to see who who has something exciting in that space. You're right. I think we we can we have kind of conquered the challenge of growing cells. Um, I, those technologies will evolve. I mean, we, we see technologies today that are going to, to help in, in, in that, uh, to help us do that better. And um, we see that as a critical part of the toolkit. And so uh, I, our, our, our strategy here, as it was indeed with the monoclonal antibody space, is to fill out that toolkit so that we're a start to finish provider. So when I look at the cell therapy workflow earlier, uh, our, our goal and objective is to address issues along that workflow. And, um, and so we are looking at things that, that do differentiation. There's no question. And what, what's interesting, and this comes back to the point at the beginning on uh, you know, what Regen Med is, uh, because of course some, some of the differentiating factors could in themselves become small molecule therapies. And that could be really interesting. So, uh, so that's that's what kind of uh, that stuff we look at pretty closely, and we do it through coll collaborations. So, and we have we have collaborations with a lot of the key uh, academic institutes, um, and and uh, some of the key pharmaceutical companies, uh, so that we, we can address issues like that. Are we there today? Uh, in some cases, yes, but we we would we don't have a complete panel by any means. I think that's several years away. Sorry. 
Single-use manufacturing has already had an impact. Can this be something that dominates this field since we're talking about relatively small volumes compared to normal, normal drugs? I know you're a big player in that, but uh, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out whether it can dominate or whether it's just a tool in the total toolkit. So I didn't get the very first part of your question, sorry. Single use. Single use, uh, so okay, okay. So uh, I didn't realize you'd said single use because that was going to be my answer. Uh, uh, <laughs> so absolutely, this is a single use. This is a single use disposable technologies game without a shadow of a doubt. And um, so, and of course that, that allows a treatment to be very personalized and very localized in a hospital. And, and so if you look at the toolkit we're putting together, that allows people to work with disposable technologies at very small scale. But of course, I mean, where we're going at some point in the future could be that we can scale that up to a completely different level. In fact, if you look at what we're doing in the monoclonal antibody space now, I mean, we have disposable technologies that work upstream at 2,000 liters, and we are matching at, at, and at in, you know, now very high yield, and we are matching down all the downstream processing uh, to, to, to match that level of upstream. And that's going to happen here as well. But, you know, we ha as I showed in some of the slides earlier, we have upstream and downstream capability here. All of it, frankly, in plastic. And the key is, the key is going to be to have great plastic components. And the economics of this, you know, work. The reimbursement, of course, becomes an interesting point because at, at some point you have to then work out you're not, you're not necessarily selling a bottle of jollop, you, you, you may actually be, have to price this based on an outcome. And I think, so the work, the, the, the sort of figuring out of reimbursement is going to be uh, also very important here. So there was one last question over here, I think. Yeah, we're going to have to move on. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So thanks very much, everybody. <laughs>